Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. I'm glad you could join us. Um, today I want to uh, review a little bit and then proceed into the judicial power. We covered sovereignty, we covered the court, uh, we've covered uh, our perspective, and so we want to realize that the, uh, the, the judicial power is the power of the Constitution that each one of us has the authority to exercise. In order to do that, we have to know the language, we have to know the uh, rules and the process of how the court works. And of course, the common law is the way that we operate our court as opposed to statutory. Now, the courts uh, we're talking about exercise judicial power, so I wanted to go to the uh, Black's Law Dictionary and, and uh, define it from there, and then we'll talk about it. The judicial power is the authority expressed by that department of government which is charged with the declaration of what law is and its construction. So we know the declaration of what law is uh, is uh, has been put forward in the Constitution and it's the uh, separation of powers. The law of this country is the Constitution. The Constitution is the government. The government is divided into three separate and equal powers, like separate governments. And the third one's called judicial power. And that's the one that we're talking about. And that is the authority that's vested in courts and judges as distinguished from the executive and legislative powers. So now we are into the judicial power and that's separate from the executive. And it also is the uh, authority that's vested in the courts, and that is the authority to declare what law is. So you'll find that that's the judicial power. And that's our power when we exercise that judicial power. So we've defining the power now, but we have to keep the perspective that each one of us is the chief justice of the court. Now, how do we get this concept, and how are we going to work that forward? Uh, when we go to the Article 6 of the California Constitution, they uh, begin to define a little better the uh, process of how the court works and what the court is made of. And at uh, Section 2, when we look at the uh, Article 6, it uh, says that the Supreme Court consists of the Chief Justice of California and six Associate Justices. So now we have the Chief Justice, but we don't know who it is. Article 1 says judicial power of the state is vested in the Supreme Court and courts of appeal and superior courts, all of which are courts of record. Then the Supreme Court consists of the Chief Justice. Then the second paragraph of Section 2. An acting Chief Justice shall perform all the functions of the Chief Justice when the Chief Justice is absent or unable to act. See how they have this uh, lawyer type uh, speaking here in the Constitution. Let's go back up to the uh, second, uh, second uh, line of paragraph 2. It says the Chief Justice may convene the court at any time. So that gives me uh, an idea of uh, the power of the Chief Justice. Can, can convene the court at any time and the only person I know that can convene a court at any time would be a sovereign, because he can he's, uh, he is the court, and wherever he goes, so of course he can call the court at any time. That then an acting chief justice shall perform all functions of the chief justice when the chief justice is absent or unable to act. That tells me that if I'm the chief justice and I don't do anything and or I'm unable to do anything, then they're going to put someone up there for me and act, act in my behalf. Then it says the Chief Justice, or if the Chief Justice fails to do so, the court shall select an Associate Justice as Acting Chief Justice. Okay, so they got a, a strange way of saying that if you don't say nothing, then we're gonna say it for you. Okay, so that's how that all works. It's right there in our uh, California Constitution. So we have to keep the perspective that we're the Chief Justice, and if we're the Chief Justice, we're going to have to run the court. We can't ask the judge or ask the other side what we're supposed to do. 
We have to know. This is going to take an education. This is going to take time. This is going to mean studying the words. That's the point of, of the last three or four uh, sessions we've been doing. It's up to us. We have to learn it. We have to do it. And it can be done. And the minute we do it, we take control, then we can show others how to do it and move, and move forward. Because all we're doing is protecting rights. And rights means free action. And each one of us has that free action available to us without being restricted. If we run into restrictions, we have to learn how to deal with those restrictions. And it's up to us. And lots of uh, the last three or four generations, everybody's been taught that someone's going to do it for us. And we vote for have someone do it for us. Or we pay an attorney to do it for us. Or someone's going to do it for us. Yeah, we can have them do it for us, but they're probably not going to be able to do as good a job as we can, and then we may not end up with the remedy that we want. And our remedy that we want is freedom, it's liberty, it's free action. And if you have that, then you've got it. We have to understand we're free until we're not. And when we're not, then we deal with those constraints that we're uh, facing. So in order to do that, we have to know how to, how to exercise judicial power because we declare the law. And we'll find that when we declare the law and we put a statement down, there's not going to be anyone anywhere else that's going to object or state a different law. There just isn't anyone to do it because everyone that's uh, in the courts today are agents. They're acting on behalf of the government. Oh, that's us. So they're acting on behalf of us to do it to us because we don't object properly. We have to know the process of what they're doing and then we can cut them off at the pass. And that's what we are, are heading towards is learning how to deal with any obstruction to our liberty. And most of the obstructions are going to come from agents of government because no one else is going to interfere with us unless we've already interfered with them somehow and got their attention. It's the government agents who are uh, out there to revenue us that, that we're going to have to face. Because if, if someone's out there committing a crime, then they deserve what they get and they deserve to be tried and they deserve to be put in jail. I mean, if we have the uh, criminal activity that uh, needs to be dealt with. But the quasi-criminal stuff that we're talking about is when there is no injured party, there is no person that has any evidence of a crime where there's an injury or damage, and then that's where the agent is representing us to go against ourselves. And when we understand that process, we learn how it works, we learn how to object and deal with it, then we're going to each be a lot freer to show our friends how to exercise this freedom. The only thing we have to do is learn the language because it's double speak and we get tricked. So with the understanding of the language, the process is what we want to do. So get your questions, get your law book, start studying and Dream up some questions that you can ask so that you can understand how to get your remedy in court and exercise judicial power. Thank you. See you next time.